How's it going everybody? This podcast is brought to you by Rise Make Life Workout, a health, self-development and lifestyle platform building a passionate community of knowledge seekers, creative dreamers and future leaders. For details on the latest Rise event that will feature expert speakers in the field of self-development and growth, check out www.rise-workout.com. That's www.rise-workout.com. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of Rise Optimize, where we make science simple to help you optimize your health. I'm the host, Shanae, and I'm joined again by Dr. Shah. The host. (laughs) Again, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) How are we, Dr. Shah? Good, good. Good. New year. Yeah, new year, new episode. New hair. New hair, (laughs) yes. New hair too, actually. Mine chopped mine off during lockdown. New year, new hair. And yeah, yeah, we're back. We're back. Cool. And today we are talking all about caffeine, which is probably one of your favorite topics. It is one of my favorite topics. I did a lot of my research um, in the lab using caffeine. So I've thought a lot about it, learned a lot about it, Um, mostly in like a sport and exercise context, but just through reading and um, designing those studies, you learn about a lot of the dosing strategies and yeah. how it works, which I think maybe not so many people are fully um, aware of. Yeah. So yeah, I think. Awesome. Well, we can probably start off there with what is caffeine, I guess. Yeah. That almost seems redundant, doesn't it? Because so many yeah. people like us are just so familiar with it is in our everyday life for most of us anyway. But um, basically it's just a compound that occurs and it occurs naturally in seeds, leaves and um, nuts of some plants. So like coffee beans, for example, um, in cola nuts, uh, cocoa beans as well. It um, occurs in tea, tea leaves to also have caffeine in it. Um, so you'll see it in the foods that are made from those plants but we also see a bunch of um, caffeine products uh, where there's been caffeine added to it and basically what they've done there so that would be like energy drinks and uh, energy bars Mm -hmm. kind of thing Um, and what they've done there essentially is it's called anhydrous caffeine they've dried they've harvested the plant that contains the caffeine and then they've dried dried it out and taken off the caffeine so what you get is like it is caffeine in a really concentrated powder form yeah um which tastes horrible which is why they <laughs> when they add it to drinks and foods there's often other things in it to yeah. kind of mask the intense bitterness of it you get a bit of the bitterness and the natural products but nowhere near as much as the caffeine powder that yeah. that's added to to different foods yeah yeah i think most people would be quite um familiar with it being sort of in the seeds and leaves like you said in regards to like i guess coffee beans and things like that but Mm. um yeah i guess not aware of how it is then sort of put into energy drinks and things like that yeah yeah and if you if you ever have seen those little caffeine pills that's basically just anhydrous caffeine and anhydrous caffeine that's been like you know condensed and put into a pill format for you to take um but you can get it in powder form as well yeah yeah shout out to no dose (laughs) shout out to (laughs) <laughs> um, so I guess most people commonly that have caffeine, they might just have caffeine in their diet because they enjoy the taste of coffee. But mm. for a lot of people, it's a, it's a pick me up. It's a, to give them energy or wake them up. Um, what would be the main reasons or uses of caffeine? Yeah. Like you said, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's one of the most widely used, uh, psychoactive substances in the world. So psychoactive meaning that it that it does have an effect on your mental processes. So it can improve your um, attention, how awake or alert you feel, your ability to concentrate, things like that. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that people might enjoy using it. There's also the social ritual that comes with some of the drinks and foods that contain caffeine. So coffee and tea, um, we have quite there's quite a, you know, a social ritual around that and people mm. might just enjoy that as well as the taste. And then in addition to that, because of its uh, positive 
impact on mental processes it's also used in the context to try and improve performance uh, and and sorry in sports context to try and improve performance as well Mm -hmm. Um, because there in addition to the the improvement in mental processes it also helps physical performance too Uh, and so people might use it very specifically for to try and improve their um, their performance there as well and yeah I mean and someone who's an athlete that's using it in their sporting context will, might also drink coffee because of the social ritual, the like mm. just for pleasure kind of thing as well. The, all of those things can be kind of mixed together into um, why people might want to use it. Yeah. 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 Um, and in regards to sort of the performance <coughs> benefits, are there any sort of specific performance like enhancements that you get from having caffeine? Yeah, I think that really depends on the context that you're that you're using it in. What performance benefits um, might be the most important or the most interesting for people? Yeah. Uh, so in terms of like, if we just look at sort of everyday life, say you've had a, like a terrible night's sleep or something like that, caffeine is really helpful and effective at just helping you feel more awake mm. very simply it's, it's very effective at doing that so um, it will improve your performance and your ability to kind of be awake and, and alert at, under conditions where perhaps you might be sleep deprived which you know I'm sure people with small children or mm. anyone who's like you know might have had a, a rough night of sleep has experienced too the coffee kind of helps them or the caffeine helps them get through their their day Um, When it comes to certain, I guess, exercise contexts, there are a couple of different um, performance benefits. So particularly in in endurance-based sport, there's the sort of delayed onset of fatigue that it can mm-hmm. can help with so you also your perception of how hard the exercise is is going to f- is going to feel a lot less with with caffeine and so that can generally improve your experience of the mm-hmm. of the exercise but also um, in a competition context that can be very helpful yeah obviously um, there are also so if we take it outside of endurance sport and move to like team sports where you've got uh, a mixture of like the prolonged exercise with bursts of high intensity mm-hmm. exercise and usually a skills element to it. Caffeine can also help one with the delay and onset of fatigue, but also the improved like cognition and ability to concentrate. And uh, it also can help your reaction times as mm-hmm. well. So it can confer some benefits in, in that context. Yeah, what else? That might, I guess. that might have been what the coaches during the Australian Open were mixing into their players' drinks. A lot of times the oh, players, really? like they just had bottles of water and they were giving it to the ball boy and being like go give that to my coach and then it would show the coach like sitting there just like mixing their drinks for them and <laughs> passing it back to the ball boy and I was like hmm I wonder what what's you know substance Going they're in the putting air. in the mixing with the water I would just imagine like a coach on the sideline with a cauldron of stuff just like yeah. drawing pre-work <laughs> yeah that's what I thought it was probably a bit of everything but um yeah it was yeah it was, although in that yeah a lot of elite athletes won't be taking some of those other supplements because they're the risk contamination but caffeine mm. is one where where, where it's legal to take in sport as yeah. well. So yeah. yeah, probably there probably was some caffeine in there in that yeah. case. Um, and so with, I guess, taking caffeine, particularly if someone does want to get those added benefits that they can get from it, how much should they be taking to mm. sort of be eliciting those that response from the body? Yeah, so uh, caffeine has been again it, it depends on, on the context and what what someone is trying to achieve by by taking it yeah. but caffeine has been sort of shown to have an impact on different elements of performance with doses as low as one milligram per kg up to doses of like nine milligrams per kg 13 milligrams per kg would be sort of your upper limit after that you between nine and 13 you're starting to get some negative side effects from taking that much yeah. so there's quite a range there and it, that will sort of that will de- what you decide to, to take will depend on a couple of different things it will depend on generally if you're doing something at rest and you're trying to get some cognitive benefits from it so like improve your alertness and your ability to concentrate then something in that lower range is likely to be better but it will vary in, in between people just Mm. depending on like your tolerance to it whether you take it 
often or it's like mm. a habitual thing for you um, and also some people are more sensitive as well yeah uh, also body size makes a difference too mm. so generally for like everyday use if you're at rest most people will probably be habitually taking somewhere between that one to three milligrams per kg dose so if you think like a 70 kilogram person for them a, an effective amount of caffeine would be a, around 210 milligrams mm -hmm. um, and it, your average like double shot flat white there's about 150 milligrams of caffeine so we're, we're most people are kind of usually yeah. actually dosing quite well for for the benefit of of just being able to concentrate better stay awake yeah, yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing yeah um in the context of exercise you sort of want to be oh and actually i should sorry just to go back to that point i should add that for everyday use it doesn't really matter when you take it right you sort of can yeah. just self-administer okay. as as you feel and then yeah. the form is is really in that case whatever you enjoy the most you know coffee or tea i mean maybe I don't really like energy drink, drinks personally, but yeah. maybe some people like those. Um, yeah. yeah, each to their own. So yeah, the form, really, I, I can't imagine there's lots of people like getting up in the morning and taking like a caffeine pill with the rest of this, like whatever yeah. other things there, yeah, with their yeah. breakfast, with yeah. their cornflakes, yeah. you know? So Shanae and her uni days <laughs> was, so... <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> yeah, that, oh my gosh. that got me through the day. Oh, so you didn't, yeah. you wouldn't have... You wouldn't actually have coffee? No, because I never liked the taste of coffee. Ah. So, I th yeah, it just got to the point during uni that I was sort of always just sort of feeling tired. And even though I was sleeping or having a nap, that's when I was sort of like, and people just, oh, why well, you just have coffee? And I'm like, well, I don't like coffee. So then that's when ah, okay. I one day was just at my local Woolworths and was like, oh, no, no, it's caffeine pill. It's like one tablet is the equivalent of one cup of coffee. And I was like, there we go. <laughs> it's coffee without the coffee. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I, I found taking it, I didn't feel like it was having that much of an effect on me. I know there were some days I'd take like four or so because I felt like it wasn't really doing much. I know it definitely stopped me from falling asleep in a lecture. Like I felt tired, mm. but at least I wouldn't actually fall asleep. Yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until I had gone away on a holiday just for a week and I didn't obviously have any with me and I just had the worst headaches and I thought oh, oh no. okay I think this is a slight withdrawal yeah from the caffeine pills and oh, I was like uh, yeah and I was like oh I should probably just ride this out and use this as a way to like get myself off them and just yeah prioritize sleep more and, and things mm. like that so yeah right okay so you've had yeah. a, you you'd never actually got the the same kind of like pleasure that a lot of people get from caffeine related beverages like mm. the, the coffee or something because it was yeah. just through pills um, yeah. I take back what I said before maybe there yeah. are some yes. people who are having yeah. like a caffeine pill with their breakfast yeah but yeah um, like you said in regards to like people that just have that habitual sort of morning coffee or or maybe energy drink there's not like it doesn't really matter the timing of that like example if they are starting work at nine and they mm. kind of want to be a, a, alert for their work like is would there be a difference if they had that first coffee at 6am versus 7am or 8am or probably not a huge difference not hugely i mean the so it is a really wide range for depending on the person at what mm. point the peak action of caffeine will occur for people yeah. so usually you can expect somewhere within between like 30 to, to 90 minutes or two hours somewhere okay. in that window which is really yeah. wide and also you can you can always have another cu cup another, of coffee yeah. at yeah. work if, if you wish as well the um i mean at, just you reminded me when you were talking about sleep before and if you're using it every day like that one of the the recommendations that I often give is to is to not have caffeine after at least like 1 or 2 p.m. I know that works really well for me personally for other people they can maybe push it out to like four depending on how sensitive they are but I find that if I keep my caffeine intake in the morning mm. then it doesn't affect my sleep as much mm. sounds like you well, it's interesting. It sounds like you were, you were very sensitive to its effects on your sleep, but not as sensitive to the effects that it had on alertness yeah, uh, and yeah, wake, yeah, you know, wake, yeah. wakefulness in the sense of like feeling kind of... Yeah, I didn't get that energized. like that sort of energised buzz where I'm like, whoa, I'm so on today. Like, whoa, I feel like I can smash through this essay and do this and do that. Like I still 
some days were like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I could like have a nap right now. But I was like, nope, you've got to get this done, keep going. And, and like I said, I, f- I felt that there was times I was sitting in a lecture being like, oh my God, I'm so tired. But like, I felt like it just kept my eyes open, even though mm. I was still feeling like, oh, I'm yeah. so tired right now. So yeah. Ah, interesting. Yeah. But, um, it, and like I've read that before in regards to not having caffeine sort of after that sort of one, mm-hmm. one or 2 PM. And that's what I've always found inter- interesting when restaurants and things offer that like yeah, as a coffee. dessert when yeah. they're like oh do we want dessert or coffee and or same when my parents used to have friends over and after that I'll have a few drinks and it, and it got to like 10 p.m where you know it was either we should go home now it's like oh does everyone anyone want a coffee coffee and yeah. slice or something and I was like it's 10 p.m you like, guys will be up all yeah, night <laughs> I, was, I used to just think like doesn't coffee and, like wake you up and make you feel good like why are you guys having coffee at 10 p.m but yeah yeah some people mm. just are able to do that and it doesn't affect yeah. them um partly for the, some of the reasons that I mentioned before like the tolerance to mm. an sensitivity but yeah and then others that will just like decimate their sleep for the yeah. night and you'll just be it'll be a mission to catch up yeah the next day <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I guess in regards to those maybe wanting more of the performance benefits or, or athletes, what would be recommended for them in regards to their dosing mm. and the timing of that? Yeah. So um, I think there's a couple of different, even if even if you're not an athlete, and I mean, because caffeine is put in things like pre-workout as well, and people mm. are using those for the for the benefits. Most of the benefit in those products is coming from the caffeine. It's the yeah. same with energy drinks. Most of the benefits are coming from the sugar and the, the caffeine, mm. sugar if it's got it in it. But yeah, we can talk about it in a couple of different contexts. I suppose if you're, so say we go back to uh, the endurance sport example or the uh, team sport example before, Mm -hmm. then an effective dose for most people will fall for them between three milligrams per kg and six milligrams per kg. That's kind of the sweet spot for caffeine intake, especially when you're trying to uh, optimize exercise performance in those Mm -hmm. contexts. You've got enough to appreciably like feel the difference and for it to have those effects on like your cognition and your mental processes but also enough to start impacting physical performance as well Mm -hmm. without the potential side effects that some people get if you have too much so like um getting like the shakes and and things like that so that in all of my studies which i did oh and the ones actually still ongoing we use a five milligram dose per kg of body weight and we find that incredibly effective the dosing for it will really depend on the event and what you're trying to achieve again generally for like say if you're using it in a a game sports context having it around 60 minutes beforehand will be helpful because then you're starting to feel the effects of it and the peak action of it is happening at the time that you're playing the game Mm -hmm. but if 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 you end up having it you know 30 to 15 minutes before you'll still feel some effects Mm. usually uh, in the format of like a 90 minute game yeah something like that say you're you're doing uh running training or a marathon it's the same kind of deal you can actually there's a really interesting thing i was reading because so a lot of people before they go out and do a a running race or something they'll like usually have a coffee in the morning habitually Mm -hmm. but then on race day it might feel like oh should i have that if i'm planning to have caffeine in the race or can i just have the coffee instead of the caffeine Mm -hmm. in the race that kind of question i've often faced that when i've done running events as well because i feel like i've missed out if i don't get to have my coffee in the morning yeah i was reading some research where they tested that thing exactly where people either had their cup of coffee right before the the race and they tracked their performance and their experience after that and then had no coffee and caffeine just the like anhydrous caffeine during Mm -hmm. the race and then caffeinated coffee and anhydrous caffeine Mm -hmm. um, during the race and it turns out that the anhydrous caffeine will work really well in the race um, obviously Mm. but if you have the coffee beforehand and the anhydrous caffeine considering that you're not having too much caffeine in the race then having the coffee beforehand won't be detrimental at all yeah it sort of adds on to each other so yeah it's you don't have to miss out on your coffee beforehand yeah if you want but 
Um, and if you want to do that instead of dosing the 60 minutes beforehand with the caffeine, for example, like taking a pill instead of having the coffee, you could potentially do that if you don't yeah. get the gastro distress from it. Yeah, I reflect back to a, a run because I think I'd gone through a phase of taking pre-workout and initially obviously felt the effects and then over time sort of obviously built a tolerance and didn't feel it as much would so stop using it. And then there was one time I had a fun run on and um, I'd been, I think I'd bought maybe a protein supplement or something else and I'd been given these like pre-workout sachets as like mm. a try. Um, and I remember I had them and I was like, oh, I should just take one of these before my run to like give me a bit of energy. And and this morning it was freezing. It was like literally like three degrees or something and it was, yeah, not ideal conditions. And I remember just shivering. I'm not in the mood for this run. I don't want to do it. Had taken that. And then once we like started running, I was just... The first K, I was like flying ahead and I was like, oh, I'm God. sprinting. And I was like, why am I sprinting? Oh, this no. is like a 5K run. I was like, I'm not going to be able to maintain this pace for the whole 5Ks. And I did. I literally just like felt like I was flying. And it was like my fastest 5K ever. And I got to the end and I was like, I could have done the 10K. Why did I oh, only do the 5K? Okay, and so I, it lasted throughout the 5K. I thought you were going to say that you went out, you ended up going out too hard. Nah, I just, the... yeah, I was like, at first I was like, oh, this is like, I've never like go this fast because I'm, I'm not going to be able to maintain this pace. But then, um, yeah, my, uh, but then I remember afterwards, like just feeling, feeling the shakes, feeling mm. like the pins and needle tingly kind of sensation all over. And I was kind of like, whoa, like yeah. that was, that was a strong hit of pre-workout. But I think again, because I hadn't obviously had it for so long or had any caffeine that mm. it would have just been, um, yeah, I would have been quite sensitive to it. Yeah. Also to that, um, effective dose range, like three milligrams to six milligrams, uh, for during exercise when you're exercising you most people won't notice the jitteriness because you're engaging yeah, in your exercise. motor system yeah yeah so and it's only until after you finish that you're like whoa yeah, I'm yeah. really oh, wired yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that I was I was like is this as if this stuff is legal like <laughs> this is just a caffeine sachet and I'm like whoa so yeah 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 I mean the other um one thing that actually I've thought a little bit about and done for myself in those longer endurance races, like endurance races like marathons or, or long bike races, is because caffeine has such an impact on how you perceive exercise. If you're not necessarily going for a uh, like personal best necessarily, you want to really just get through the, the race. One approach that I've taken is actually to not take any caffeine before the race and instead dose it in the middle because mm. in the middle or in the first quarter because then by the time it hits I end up feeling just so much better yeah comparatively to getting that extra started. yeah extra jolt of energy at the end when you need it yeah when you're already yeah. starting to fatigue yeah. yeah and that's actually something that we've done in our experimental trials where we give people a very small dose of caffeine at the start and a much bigger one in the middle and you see that maintenance of an increase in some cases of their their mood and like their mood improves and their perception of the exercise either remains the same or starts to go down mm -hmm. where if you didn't have the caffeine you would generally see that people get a bit grumpy yeah and like, oh I'm only halfway I've still got you know another 15 k's to go on my run or whatever yeah, yeah. they get a bit grumpy and start thinking that the exercise is terribly hard um instead of like what your experience was where they're just like flying through so you yeah. can you, you can choose different do dosing strategies depending on what you want once you know one, one, the effective dosing range, and you can figure out what works best for you by playing around with it between that three to six. Mm. Figure it out relative to your own body weight and try start out at the smaller one and see what works best for you in that context. And then the dosing strategy, depending on the event. If it's a really, really long event, then maybe spacing it out in a way mm. that I said before would be better. If it's a much shorter one, then you want peak action the peak action of the caffeine to occur pretty much when you start and it mm. will be maintained for like a, at least an hour usually after that re those really sort of intense kind of peak experiences associated with it so yeah you can use that to your advantage with that knowledge yeah. it yeah. really just depends on the context yeah 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 Oh, actually, we didn't we didn't talk about its effects on strength strength training. Yeah, strength yep. training. So, I mean, it's pretty clear that it's it's beneficial for the context that I said before around endurance sport and uh, team sports and activities that have some high intensity interval or high intensity element to it. Yeah, um, it's useful for those. Uh, strength training, it's 
in the literature it's not as clear really whether it's beneficial or not there does seem to be a difference between untrained and trained people Mm -hmm. also strangely it seems like it's more helpful at improving like one rms or or you know number of reps to exhaustion in the upper body compared to the lower body sort of like you know results that are a bit noisy and kind of mixed so it's not too clear but you'll still be you know if 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 it's something that you incorporate into your strength training workouts just to kind of feel better during exercise and improve your mood, then um, it can yeah. it can be still conferring that, that benefit as well. Yeah. Um, but specifically in terms of like, can I push more? Can I, you know, does it help my muscles do more reps and stuff? Mm. It doesn't seem like it. That's what I used yeah. to found when I, because it was when I was strength, first got into strength training that I was taking pre work I just found like it was more <laughs> if I had a pumping playlist was more helping me hit a pb versus if i take a pre-workout or not and when i realized like how much money i was spending on pre-workout i I thought oh what's that's sort of not having the effect that it initially was and that's when i thought i'm not going to worry about that anymore and as long as i've got a good playlist that that was what helped my strength training the most so Mm. so yeah it's interesting that you said that the the research isn't super clear in regards to strength training compared to endurance training and, and team sports and things like that yeah yeah, and the, I mean, the dosing for that too is, is similar to what I said before with, in relation to the peak action of it. If you, want, if you want to take caffeine for a workout like that to get some of the mood benefits and yeah. things, then ideally like 60 minutes before, but if, if it, hopefully it's a long workout, if you yeah. take it like 30 minutes before, then you'll still end up feeling some of the effects. Just keep yeah. in mind if you're working out in the afternoon, the half-life mm. can be of caffeine for it to get out of your system can be quite long long mm. um like up to 10 hours so yeah it, it can mean sometimes depending on how fast you process it and how sensitive you are affect your sleep so yeah, yeah which then like you've said if especially in regard into the context of strength training like if someone's doing their strength training at 5 p.m and taking their pre-workout that has caffeine in it or just taking a caffeine mm. supplement to get them through that workout when like you said it, it may not actually be having a huge effect on regards to like how much they can lift and if they're going to reach a new pb mm. but then it could be detrimental and affecting their sleep yeah. that night and that's where like the training yeah you've got to weigh yeah. that up of like if i like you said again depending on how sensitive they are they might sleep fine but if there's someone that doesn't get a great night's sleep when when really as i've said having a pump and playlist might be what Mm. you just need to get through your workout versus worrying about taking a caffeine supplement particularly if you're training in the evening yeah whereas like you said if you're training in the morning and you're already someone that has a habitual coffee first thing when you get up in the morning and then you're going to the gym to train like cool Mm. that's a win-win you enjoy your coffee and you're also going to get some sort of benefit yeah you're training but um Yeah. yeah something to keep in mind if you're on an evening gym goer yeah yeah Yeah, I definitely um get I get through all of my workouts in the evenings without caffeine for that reason of the sleep interference for me yeah Mm. so is there a difference in the effects of depending on the type of caffeine that you are having if someone is having it in the form of coffee versus an energy drink Mm. versus no dose or (laughs) caffeine pill um is yeah difference in the way it does work yeah uh, not necessarily in the way that it works but in how sort of potent it is and how effective it is at eliciting all of those um, benefits that we we talked about so if you have caffeine in a food or a drink where it's come from its natural form like coffee or tea then for the same like equivalent dose in anhydrous caffeine or that powdered format the coffee fares slightly worse in terms of its effectiveness it's still very good so like you know you get a lot of these other um sort of psychological benefits from from having your cup of tea and having your cup of coffee it's definitely it's not worth like stopping yeah. that and if and you really enjoy that and and moving to the um to the powdered format don't yeah. do that there's yeah. so many other good fun social uh benefits to getting yeah. a coffee instead and having your caffeine in that format but if you're comparing like equivalent doses of caffeine then yeah the um the stuff that's added to energy drinks i mean there's other stuff in the energy drinks as well that sort of complicate things but or or nodos for example Mm. um then the the anhydrous stuff seems to perform slightly better yeah so if if you're taking that across to wanting to perform for an event specifically like a special one then i'd recommend looking at at taking caffeine pills 
mm-hmm. for that or um, having it in the form of and when it's added to a gel or something just make sure that the dosing of the stuff that's in the gel will be enough to elicit yeah. a benefit yeah yeah and like you said just because it, it's yeah naturally it's going to be more potent when it's in that format than mm. in coffee yeah and so how does caffeine work how does it yeah do what it does how does it give us all those great benefits so there has been so much research done on this and, and they've looked at uh, what caffeine does uh, peripherally, so outside of the central ner- nervous system and your like circulatory system and and all of that sort of thing. And then they've also looked at what caffeine does in the central nervous system. It's pretty clear that the primary site of action for caffeine is is in the brain there are those some peripheral effects of it Mm -hmm. um there's also some effects that it has in the muscle that they did in a a bunch of um, animal studies but the difficulty with those ones is that they used doses of caffeine that are way way higher than what we would usually consume or what humans Mm -hmm. would habitually consume the the studies that have looked at its effect on the brain um, they consistently shows that you know at doses that we regularly consume it it um, it seems to you observe this happening and so it seems like the most likely mechanism of action basically so yeah. caffeine essentially it is it exerts its action in the central nervous system what it does is it's an adenosine antagonist and so what that means is that essentially caffeine comes into the brain and it sits in Oh, I should take a step back and maybe talk about receptors, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. So in our in our brains, we have, like on the surface of neurons, we have uh, these receptors that are specifically designed to receive different neurochemicals that sit in the brain. Adenosine is one of those neuro- neurochemicals, and it has specific receptors that it sits in and exerts it, its action. Uh, what caffeine basically does is it, comes in and it impersonates the adenosine and it sits in that receptor instead of adenosine and blocks the adenosine from sitting in there and having its its effects on on the neurons and this is this is important because adenosine what it usually does is as our neurons are active and as we're going throughout our day adenosine will uh, start to accumulate as a byproduct of activity Mm -hmm. and so in that way our brain keeps a tabs essentially on like how much adenosine is um, present as a way of kind of modulating our levels of arousal and wakefulness. So really simplistically, the more adenosine you end up having and the more it's binding to the receptors, the more drowsy and sleepy you'll end up feeling. Yeah. And so by sitting in that, in that receptor and blocking adenosine, like fending it off, stopping it from binding, your caffeine is essentially putting a break on our nervous system's breaking system or yeah. and instead of allowing adenosine to kind of promote that sense of drowsiness what caffeine does is indirectly enhance the action of other neurotransmitters specifically dopamine and norepinephrine i think dopamine most people will have heard before and those it, it enhances the action of those those neurotransmitters can go ahead and basically do their job better and those are, are really involved in and making you feel awake and attention yeah. and uh, mood as well. So that's that's where you get those benefits from. Essentially, it's blocking adenosine and as a result, enhancing dopamine and norepinephrine instead. There you go. Yeah. Interesting to know. I don't think I ever knew how caffeine Oh, worked. you didn't? No. Oh, okay. Well, I had never, I guess, not really looked into it because, again, yeah, I think just had always heard, you know, oh, it gives you energy, mm. that alarm was like when I used to take it but yeah Mm. very interesting and so based on I guess the way in which it works and the fact that you know sometimes people do speak of like withdrawals and things like that Mm. like can you get addicted to caffeine yeah this is a um a common concern I Mm. I think so actually the uh the the relative risk of of becoming addicted to caffeine is is really quite low and i mean addiction in, in the sense of there's both like a physical dependence on it and a, a psychological component to it mm. where people are you know changing their behaviors to to essentially try to 
allow themselves to use that substance more that they become kind of maladaptive in the way that they're using mm. using it you're not going to it's very unlikely that you're going to get to the point where you're you're going to need to like remortgage your house yes. in order to yeah. like fund your caffeine habit <laughs> you just won't feel that motivated to do yeah that. yeah um it's not addictive in that sense of the word but like you say there's those those kind of hallmarks of dependence that mm. that are associated with caffeine use uh, as well. And I mean, the ones that are the most relevant are the ones that we've sort of talked about before. So, and, and the dependence refers mostly to like the physical dependence on its use, on its habitual use. So you, you know, you um, experience withdrawal symptoms. If you're a habitual coffee drinker, you might have mm. two coffees a day and then you stop and you'll get headaches and a little mm. bit anxious or restless, maybe a bit irritable. People usually experience that, some to, to varying degrees, and like that can take anywhere from as, you know, they, they can kick in in about 24 hours, and then you'll start like anywhere between like a week, a day and a week, you might experience mm. those withdrawal symptoms. So there's that part of, of caffeine. There's also um, tolerance that is involved in the dependence to it. So that's where you're, you know, for the same dose, you're not eliciting the same mm, responses same response. in the body. Yep. Uh, it seems that when it comes to that, the tolerance is more related to some of the peripheral actions of caffeine. So people might notice when they're not habitual users, they might notice that they have an increase in their heart rate. Also, they might notice that they that they have to uh, pee a lot more. That's the sort of mild diuretic effect of, of caffeine. Compared to like a habitual user, they may not notice those things and that's sort mm. of developing a tolerance. It doesn't seem like you need to necessarily take more and more and more to feel the same levels of wakefulness or alertness. It, it doesn't seem that you build as much of a tolerance up to that, a little bit, but not, you know, yeah. not. Um, it's more seen in some of those physical... Mm. physical ones and then the last the last part about caffeine that um is related to dependence is is reinforcement and mm. that's where using something ends up reinforcing its its use in the future so with caffeine there's obviously the improvements that you feel in your mood and alertness that can be reinforcing but then when it comes to the way that we use it there's also a bunch of other things that sort of come into that there's the taste for some people when mm. it comes to coffee and tea that can be reinforcing in itself there's a social ritual so the reinforcing one is, is a little bit more kind of hazy I guess yeah um, but in some there is a very low risk of becoming addicted to mm. it if you want to stop you can stop just like yeah. what um what you did it's a bit horrific for a few days yeah yeah um and you may be not the nicest person to be around mm. like it, i mean i get really irritable if i mm. if i when i've had to withdraw from caffeine but um generally people shouldn't have mm. too much trouble yeah yeah those are the people that i sometimes think should if they're the people that are, i just remember working with different people having colleagues that were just sort of like don't talk to me until i've had my morning coffee and then i was like that once i had the coffee like okay you can come in now and i was like really like <laughs> you can't hold a conversation or be like in a good mood or be social until they've had their morning coffee that's when i think oh if you're so reliant on it to sort of get you focused or in the zone or whatever mm. so i was like oh maybe you should you know try let it come out of your system for a little bit and then yeah, ease back into it and not be it. so like reliant on it first thing in the morning mm. before they can do anything or hold a conversation yeah but be each civil their own. to other people yeah right? yeah exactly i was just sort of like wow okay i was like i can talk to you with or without anything so <laughs> i guess same when people though get hungry or hangry you know mm. sometimes people can't um, sort of true. focused or hold a conversation it's like i need to eat otherwise i'm just gonna kill someone or whatever yeah. so i used to be i used to be terrible with hanger yeah. but i've i discovered that it was mostly psychological if mm. i just you know if i just sort of stuck through it and yeah. didn't complain yeah because then... hunger does come in waves like yeah. you, you do you can sometimes feel like intensely hungry and then but if you were distracted having to do something else the next minute that wave kind of settles and it will come back again so i think it is one of those things that yeah, you can let it sort of over overwhelm you psychologically to the point that that's what you're focused on. You're like, if I don't get to eat now, like yeah. I can't do anything. Or but if you if you literally had no choice, that you're like, oh no, I have to 
you know, I've got a work call now or something, like I have to do this before I can eat, you just, yeah. and sort of take your focus off of that. I think you can kind of do what you have to do before you can eat, but. Um, mm, not let it yeah. derail you completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So why can't someone get addicted to coffee given the sort of the way it works and the effect it does have? Yeah, so there is a lot of fear, I suppose, that because caffeine acts on the same, like we talked about before, the same types of neurotransmitter systems, so that dopamine and norepinephrine, those systems there, that they, that's very similar to the same, the systems that like amphetamines, for example, Mm. act on. Mm. Uh, particularly dopamine so people often that fear of getting addicted to caffeine comes from a knowledge of that oh it's having Mm. an effect on my on dopamine and so it must be highly addictive Mm. and the key difference between some type of like amphetamine or stimulant that actively targets the dopamine system and is highly addictive is that it's actually increasing the levels of dopamine in the brain specifically Mm -hmm. Um, and in certain parts which are related to reward yeah Um, and caffeine in the way that it acts the way that we spoke about it before it's really indirectly enhancing the ability of dopamine to that's already there yeah to do what it's doing and also the um the you know the effects in the specific areas of the brain of that are different as well and so that's but that's most likely why you don't it doesn't have as high addictive potential as something because it's not necessarily giving you an increase or giving you more like mm, you said it's yeah. just having an effect on what's already there yeah uh yeah, yeah. and that that's sort of that's what seemed to be one of the main reasons as to why it's it's not addictive if you mm-hmm. compare it to um other stimulants yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um and so I guess another common question that people may have is how are others more sensitive to caffeine than mm. some are more or less sensitive? Is there any sort of research in regards to that? So, yeah, I've got one friend in particular who, like, she sniffs a tea leaf at, like, 4 p.m. and is, like, up all night, you know, and you're like, <laughs> that's ridiculous. I'm obviously yeah. exaggerating. But... Yeah, there are some people that are just really sensitive to it. Mm. And uh, what that comes down to mainly is genetics it, it, and what kind of expression of adenosine receptors you have in your brain in addition to how uh, well the caffeine binds to them. Yeah. That's really sort of out of your control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it makes more sense when now that, now that you know how caffeine works, it makes like some of the reasons why different people are more sensitive start to make a lot more sense whereas other Mm. people would just before now if you don't know the mechanism you'd just be like oh yeah yeah (laughs) Um, definitely so there's that and then there's also um how quickly you might uh, process or metabolize the caffeine too and that uh, that can depend on like your body size it seems like Mm. there might be differences in gender if you smoke it seems you seem to process it quicker other like medications you might be on like oral contraceptives seem to um, slow it down so those things all sort of affect how sensitive you are and sort of how long you might experience the effects of it for interesting so you're generally somewhat out of your your control yeah those things yeah yeah and so what is the sort of content of caffeine in in some of the common we've obviously touched on um coffee and energy drinks what is commonly how much caffeine do we get when we're having a coffee or energy drink or chocolate Mm. yeah so in like a one shot of espresso is around 75 milligrams of caffeine so a double shot is around, like I said before, yeah. the flat white is around 150 milligrams. So that, yeah, you can see why people most, well, I arrive on the like habitual intake of about two coffees a day, mm-hmm. between one and two. That works really well for me and it, it makes sense when you remember that effective dosing of, you know, somewhere, if, if it's not for exercise, like between two and two and a above like you want to be on that lower end yeah if it's around three then for me my effective dose at three milligrams per kg would be around 210 milligrams so Mm. you know 300 milligrams all up like across in the morning in the form of two coffees works really well yeah yeah 75 milligrams per uh, shot of espresso with tea it's a little trickier because how long you brew it for makes a difference okay uh so 
that is around 50 milligrams so a little bit less than espresso but if you if you keep that sucker in there for like ages then you could you could potentially get it a lot higher like up to 100 milligrams mm. um if it's like black tea yeah uh, green tea actually has a fair amount of caffeine in it as well when you you're brewing it like that and it can be comparable to coffee just depending on how long you brew it for yeah yeah uh, i actually have some of these other ones here because i don't i i don't drink <laughs> that. neither so, <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah, so I needed to buy one to go and check. So yeah, can you see on the back of that, like what it? What does this say? Oh, it's V Caf- by the way for people. Listening. V V sugar free. It says a hundred. Wait, uh, per, per serving. Yep, one hundred and fifty five milligrams mm. of caffeine. Okay. Yep. And it probably has some other. Oh, like guarana. Warhead yeah, it has uh, rubber flavor. Niacine. It's got vitamin B six and B twelve in there. That's good. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the guarana also will have a similar stimulant effect as well. So the, you've got the caffeine happening and then so those additional things probably bump up the... Yeah, <laughs> interesting it says, um, yeah, product contains caffeine. This product is not recommended for children, pregnant or lactating women or individuals sensitive to caffeine. Consume responsibly. Usage one can max daily. Mm. But I, I wonder if that's assuming that other people might be having a coffee mm. or this at the other and therefore yeah. they just to be on the safe side say i'll just have one yeah when some people probably go through yeah, a four pack so much fluid too isn't it to yeah like 500 mil far out um mm. i've also got coke here because i in my uh like notes i have that in a coca-cola can 350 mils there's 34 milligrams this actually just says contains caffeine. It doesn't even say oh, how much. So effects, yeah. it must be quite low. It must be low enough that they don't it have to report count. it. Yeah. Uh, and I, it would be similar with the with chocolate as well. That's actually another source of, of caffeine that most people don't always consider. So in milk chocolate, you have less than what you do in like dark chocolate, for example. So that has about 10 milligrams of caffeine in it. It won't say because yeah, it it's not yeah. enough. And I mean this, and that's a how many? Mil- that's fifty grams. fifty grams of chocolate. And then with dark chocolate, it, this is a 25, 25 gram. So that that would be like less, less than five. But if you were to make them equivalent in mm. size, then you would have more caffeine in the mm. dark chocolate. You'd have to eat a lot to like, yeah, yeah, to start to feel. I was gonna say I've never, caffeine. I've never eaten chocolate at night time and not been able to sleep. I yeah, think. Um, my nana um, actually like gets real wired off dark chocolate, oh, wow. so I think that she's, um, she might be quite sensitive to it, or yeah. just eating, eating lots too much. of dark chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, is there? A link at all between caffeine and hydration, particularly with exercise? Mm, yeah. Yeah, because some people get concerned that they'll get dehydrated if they have it yeah. uh, because of the diuresis or like needing to pee more. Yeah. So caffeine generally just at rest is a really mild diuretic. So it's mild enough that the amount of fluid that you're probably having with if, mm. if you're consuming it in coffee or tea um i mean even one of these yeah <laughs> um you're you're likely replacing the fluid that you're, you're losing, losing yeah as a result of of it, it making you need to pee more so that's at rest the other consideration is that exercise those physiologically are like really are really different scenarios for your body there's really no evidence to suggest that if you're having caffeine during exercise that it's going it it actually elicits an, a diuretic effect and if it if it does it's very small and it's not to a degree that it's going to inhibit your performance mm-hmm. or add to to your dehydration yeah basically yeah Yeah. so people can rest assured that yeah when they're using it they're not going to get overly dehydrated yeah from doing it as long as they're not restricting their fluid intake but Mm. no that's good to know um i'm thinking in regards to someone like myself that obviously doesn't have coffee and went off my caffeine pills a long time ago um in regards to the benefit that we get from caffeine is it do you think it's good enough that you sh- if you're not taking it that you should consider it in regards to sport or only if you're maybe feeling that you do need a bit of a boost? Mm. I think it really depends on what you're, again, what you're trying to achieve. If you're a competitive athlete and you're in one of those scenarios like what I said before where you're doing endurance activity or team sports, then 
I would 100% recommend using caffeine in your events. Mm. It will it will be very beneficial for you and pretty much all of your other competitors will be taking it as well mm. uh, unless they're for some reason that they've decided to be caffeine free but it's legal in sport and mm. it, it's safe we know the effective doses to use and uh, it's beneficial yeah in the case of if you're you're not a competitive athlete and you're sort of you're more in your situation where you you've act, actively kind of been like I don't really see how it adds then mm. no you don't need yeah. to yeah you like it doesn't confer enough of if you don't see it doesn't confer enough of a benefit to yeah. your everyday life then there's no reason mm. to like think that you should add it in but if you do want to try it then it you know it's mm. one of the safer ones to do and it's one of the ones that uh, you we have very clear guidelines around mm. how you can be using it and what for mm. yeah. yeah yeah I think that's like like a lot of things it is trial and error and seeing and even though like you said there's there's the good research to back it up it's sort of trying it out for yourself and mm. um, seeing if you do feel the effects and going from there if, you, if it is something that you want to have regularly for your training or like you said or even if it's just saving it for special events yeah. as I did that time and it gave me wings and set, yeah. <laughs> set a 5k PB I don't think I've ever ran 5k's in 20 minutes ever <laughs> oh my since gosh, then but really um fast. yeah and this is on like a three degree day like, it was freezing like, I remember beforehand feeling just like so stiff being like if I'm gonna be able to run it's so cold um but yeah so maybe if I have any events coming up I'll you can get back into yeah, it. you can ask me to to come up with the with yeah. the, the amounts and the, and the dosing strategy for you if yeah. you like. <laughs> Epic. To do that. <laughs> um, so if anyone has any more questions around caffeine, where can they hit you up? Oh, I've forgotten <laughs> these because we haven't done this since last year. So on Instagram, Charlie J Connell. Awesome. Yeah, cool. yeah. Sweet. And as always, we'll leave a few sort of references, citations in the in the notes on YouTube. But you can always listen along on Spotify and Apple as well. And that's us. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Sinead. Yeah.